If there was one truism with Hyundais of the past, it was that the bigger the car became, the less competitive it would be. The brand's impressive i40 is a medium range Mondeo sized challenger that comprehensively knocks that kind of thinking into touch. Offering accessible pricing and plenty of space and equipment isn't anything new for the Korean company, but the quality of finish and the maturity of the styling on offer here certainly is. We don't tend to think of large Hyundais as being especially desirable, but the South Korean maker is determined that we should. Their smaller models make more sense on paper than most of their rivals, but the larger and pricier a car becomes, the bigger is the role played by brand equity, which with this maker has been slowly building in recent years as buyers realize this to be a brand beyond the bargain basement, a mark capable of producing tempting Mondeo class medium range models like this one, the i40. Just a glance at this car is enough to suggest that the step up it will represent over its unremarkable Sonata predecessor will be vast. But that step will need to be seismic if Hyundai are to get on terms with the Vauxhall Insignias, Volkswagen Passats, Peugeot 508s and Renault Lagunas battling Ford's Mondeo in the medium range marketplace. In a segment splintering sales to people carriers, crossovers and SUVs, it's no longer enough merely to offer a good product. Executive quality is now the norm in this sector, an attribute previously unfamiliar to high-end motorists. And to be able to offer this, as well as class-leading practicality and low running costs, alongside more traditional high-end virtues like strong value and high specification, is asking for quite a car. Whether that car is a saloon or tourer estate with an I-40 badge on the boot is what we're here to find out. Now you have to have an extremely impressive caliber of chassis engineers to be able to produce a product simultaneously able to please both motorway mile munchers and driving enthusiasts. In the medium range sector, Ford's Mondeo nearly manages it and Peugeot's 508 isn't far behind, but every other car in this segment tends to have to prioritize uh, one approach or the other. Now in development of the i40, Hyundai was undecided, even going as far as to produce two prototypes, one stiff, one soft, and then ask motoring journalists which approach they should take. Never really a good idea. In the event, they've come to their senses and realized that cars like this are primarily used as business tools and family transport, with the occasional back road blitz. Now, the first two will be comfortably within the remit of this i40. Um, and as far as the back road blitz bit is concerned, assuming you're not trying to follow a Mondeo or a 508, you'll be as well set up in this car as you would be in any of the more dynamically able cars in this sector. Uh, I guess the only thing that uh, might be a little disconcerting at first is the artificial heaviness that's built into this car's power steering, but you soon get used to it. Now, most buyers will be looking at one of the two 1.7 litre CRDI diesels, developing either 115 or 136 PS. In some respects, the smaller of the two actually feels a bit quicker, with maximum power arriving earlier in the rev range. That's because the Pokia diesel has longer gearing, a benefit you appreciate on the motorway where it's slightly quieter at higher speeds. Resta 60 in the 115 PS version occupies 12.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 118 miles an hour. And those are figures that improve to 10.6 seconds and 124 miles an hour in the 136 PS 1.7 litre CRDI diesel, thanks to its pokey 325 Newton meters of torque. The other mainstream i40 variant is the one I'm driving here, the 135 PS 1.6 litre GDI petrol unit. 
it's uh, gasoline direct injection, so the GDI doesn't stand for any kind of diesel. And uh, performance-wise, it slots between the two 1.7-litre CRDIs that I was mentioning a minute ago. So rest to 60 takes 11.6 seconds in this entry-level petrol model on the way to a top speed of 121 miles an hour. From here, I can't see much point in going any further if uh, you really want a petrol engine in your i40. The only other option is a 177 PS 2-litre GDI that looks faster on paper, rest to 60 uh, taking 9.7 seconds on the way to a top speed of 132 miles an hour. But in practice it doesn't actually feel that much faster. You can opt for uh, a six-speed automatic across the range. It's got a set of steering wheel F1 style paddles, but it's not especially responsive. And most will feel happier going for the more satisfying six-speed manual box that I've got here. Perhaps one of the things that impresses me most about this car is its refinement, an area that high-end is clearly thought long and hard about. They've thrown everything at this issue, uh, textile wheel arch liners, uh, sound absorbing layers around the engine, even air permeable carpet. And it's all enough to make this i40 a very quiet car indeed. Fluidic sculpture. It sounds as if it should create an elegant result, doesn't it? Well here it has. Heavily influenced by Hyundai's Frankfurt Research and Development Center, this is a kind of shape you'd never have seen from a Korean brand until just a few years ago. The hexagonal front grille is shaped like a diamond and surrounded by headlamps modeled on those of a bird of prey and incorporating hook-shaped strips of LEDs that glow white in daylight. It's neatly styled at the rear too with a smart chrome strip between the lights and an integral spoiler above the rear window of this Tourer version. Now it's this estate that most UK buyers will probably want rather than the alternative saloon body style, especially as Hyundai isn't bothering to offer a five door hatch. Equal efforts have been expended on this stylized interior with its neat graphics. Uh, faux aluminium detailing, the classy high definition screen you get centrally placed on upper end models and nice design touches. There's plenty of high quality soft touch plastic too, though that doesn't extend to things like the door pulls or the lower door skins. Only these shiny column stalks remain as a reminder of the cheap feeling high end interiors of old. And finding the ideal driving position is easy. My only comment being that it's also easy to bash your knuckles on downward gear changes if this central cup holder section is in use. At the rear there's comfortable space for two, even if there's a couple of six footers up front and room at a squash for three, pretty par for the course in this class, only a Mondeo offers more. Headroom is excellent, even on plusher models that have a huge panoramic glass sunroof fitted, though it's a pity that rear seat passengers can't easily slide their feet under the seats in front, the seat bases are quite thick. Um, you do though get a reclining seat mechanism for greater comfort on longer journeys. Now, estate cars in the medium range Mondeo sector can't normally afford to allow their looks to compromise their load capacities. And that's certainly not been the case with this i40, despite its sloping rear styling. You get 553 litres of fresh air in the luggage compartment of this i40 Tourer. That's more than you get in a comparable estate version of a Ford Mondeo or Vauxhall Insignia. Uh, second only to cars like Volkswagen's Passat or Skoda Superb in this class. Now you can use the space available very effectively as well with uh, concealed compartments to the left and the right, a, uh, a string elasticated section here to stop your eggs mixing with your iron brew and a useful underfloor compartment that uh, enables you to divide off your smaller items and keep them away from prying eyes. And there's more. 
At extra cost, you can specify an Audi-style boot dividing system that sits on the surface of the luggage bay to further compartmentalize the space that you have. And this is a nice touch. Unlike many cars in this sector and in others, this Hyundai retains a full-sized spare wheel, which you'll really appreciate if you're ever stranded by the roadside. If you need more ultimate space, then as usual, you can fold forward this 60-40 split folding rear seats. Now they don't fold completely flat and it does get a little bit narrow between these wheel arches but you have got a lot of space here, 1,719 litres to be exact. Now Hyundai has intentionally priced this car slightly below obvious rivals but not by as much as you might think. So I-40 pricing resides in the 18 to 26,000 pound bracket with a premium of around 1,000 pounds if you want the Tourer estate that we've been looking at here. Now the 1.6 litre GDI petrol model that I've been driving resides at the bottom end of that pricing scale, but most UK customers will probably want a diesel, a 1.7 litre CRDI, that uh, with 115 PS will cost you around £1,000 more, and with 136 PS will cost you around £1,800 more. Rather refreshingly, when it comes to green friendliness, um, you get uh, more for less with i40 ownership. Uh, Blue Drive i40 models reside at the bottom end of the pricing scale uh, and that's in contrast to other manufacturers who will often charge you more for their eco derivatives. As for rivals, well for years now Hyundai has been platform sharing with Kia so it's no surprise to find that Kia's Optima is the car most close in concept to this i40. But the rivals you're probably comparing, you'll be probably comparing this model to won't be South Korean. So let's look at how this i40 stacks up against them. Let's take the, uh, the volume derivative, the 115 PS 1.7 litre CRDI diesel as an example. Against this, you're looking at paying around 800 pounds more if you want a Peugeot 508 uh, 1.6 EHDI with 112 PS and you're looking at paying around £1,500 more for a comparable Vauxhall Insignia CDTI 130 PS. £1,700 more uh, if you want a Ford Mondeo, a rival Mondeo 1.6 TDCI with 115 PS or around £2,000 more for a comparable Volkswagen Passat, the feebly powered 105 PS 1.6 litre TDI. So that's diesel. What about if you're looking for a petrol i40, like the 1.6 GDI I've been driving here? Well, against this particular derivative, you're looking at around £600 more if you want to own a rival Peugeot 508 1.6 VTI 120 PS, and around £1,000 more if you want a rival Vauxhall Insignia 1.8i 140 PS, or a comparable Ford Mondeo 2 litre i 145 PS. And again, if you want a Volkswagen Passat, you're looking at around £2,000 as a premium for the comparable 1.4 TSI with 122 PS. Now, whichever saloon or tourer i40 derivative you choose, this entry-level 1.6 litre petrol GDI, the 2 litre petrol GDI, or the 1.7 litre CRDI diesel in either lower or higher powered forms, you won't be looking at paying that much more for it than you would for a decently engined and specced focus sized family hatchback from the next class down. And all i40s come with a pretty good level of standard equipment that runs to alloy wheels, air conditioning, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, a leather covered steering wheel with integrated audio controls. Uh, you've also got electrically powered and heated door mirrors with integral LED indicators, all round electric windows, and a hill holder clutch to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Most customers will probably want to go for the mid-spec versions, which also include touchscreen satellite navigation, uh, front and rear parking sensors, dual zone climate control and cruise control. As well as all of that, there are a range of clever but mainly optional features that you probably wouldn't expect to find at this price point. Cooled as well as heated front seats that when electrically powered automatically move backwards as you open the door to uh, aid getting in and out. Um, heated rear seats, a heated steering wheel and a clever automatic anti-fogging mechanism for the ventilation system that senses when the windscreen is getting fogged up and automatically deals with it. 
you can also specify a premium infinity stereo, a self-parking system, and a lane departure warning system that alerts dozy drivers who are drifting out of their lanes on the highway. More conventional safety kit that's included in the standard tally includes seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag, and the usual electronic um, braking, traction, and stability control to make sure that hopefully you'll never have to use them. Hence the Euro NCAP five-star safety rating. Now, while Ford and Vauxhall make a song and dance about eco-technology with specially badged Econetic and EcoFlex derivatives, Hyundai just gets on and offers it on uh, all the most affordable i40 models. They all get blue drive badging, which essentially means that uh, they include a stop-start system to cut the engine when you're waiting at uh, a Pelican crossing or at the lights or when you're stuck in uh, urban traffic. You get low rolling resistance tires. Uh, you get an automatically actuated radiator blank which speeds warm up and you get uh, an eco indicator so you can monitor how you're doing and uh, make sure that your gear changes are eco orientated. Now the result of all this is that uh, both the volume 1.7 litre CRDI diesel models um, get under the 120 grams per kilometre CO2 mark and that means that they both earn a lowly 13% company car tax banding. The 115 PS diesel version returns a particularly creditable 113 grams per kilometre of CO2 and 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Figures that uh, you'd have uh, been finding from a little super mini until just a few years ago. The 136 PS diesel isn't far behind, managing 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 119 grams per kilometre of CO2. Um, upper spec models uh, rather curiously lose the blue drive tweaks and as a result their CO2 readings and fuel consumption figures are markedly inferior. All of which means that even if you uh, can afford a really swish i40, it might be better to opt for a lower order model and spec it up. Those customers opting for the 135 PS 1.6 litre petrol GDI model, that's the one I'm driving here, also get blue drive. And uh, that means that they get a derivative able to better its uh, 2 litre petrol stable mate by nearly 30 grams per kilometre. So you get 140 grams per kilometre of CO2 out of this car and a uh, combined cycle fuel return of 47.1 miles per gallon. Now that's not a bad showing for a petrol model in this class of car, but uh, you need to bear in mind that the 1.7 litre CRDI diesel i40 is only a thousand pounds more which means that at the pumps you'd recoup the difference between the two cars in about 23,000 miles, notwithstanding any uh, benefits the diesel version might have when it comes to taxation or residual values. Whatever i40 model you choose, you'll find it covered by arguably the best customer protection plan in the industry, a five-year triple care package including five years of warranty, uh, annual vehicle health checks and roadside assistance. And insurance? Well, uh, groupings on the 1 to 50 grouping scale range between 12 and 18. Now it's taken a very long time for the South Korean motor industry to bring us a class competitive conventional large family car. But I think we can safely say that they've done that now. This i40 ruthlessly ticks all the boxes necessary for success in the medium range Mondeo marketplace. It's smart, spacious, frugal and beautifully built. It is, in short, a very competitive car indeed. Other rivals are sharper to drive and a few have smarter badges. But if you're basing your choice of car in this sector on sheer common sense, then this i40 is an option you can't ignore. New thinking, new possibilities, just as Hyundai promises.